and it and it's and it's tough because of course we need the galleries we need the museums we need those people but also they need need us they need work to put on their walls they need things for people to come and see but uh, my it, whole my whole career i've rethought that really? especially especially now i am in the deepest thought i've ever been about all that. All right, here we go. So when this, uh, you know, COVID just keeps coming up. I don't know why, you know, why a world pandemic would be, keep coming up in, uh, in our talks, but, but they, it does. And, when the pandemic first hit, I, uh, I was worried being an artist, making my living this way. And um, I started to paint things that made me regress into childhood. And that was, for me, one of the main things was baseball. Right. And that got me um, involved in some virtual shows. The first was Battle of the Bay. Ah, yeah. And then that led to um, a fundraiser for the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum in Kansas City. And it was me and 99 other artists. And I completely felt like a kid again because these other artists are just into, into um, the subject matter as much as I am. And... It was like when I was a kid and trading baseball cards. Um, so one of those artists, I really love his work. I particularly seen him on Twitter more, which I thought was cool. Because I just started using Twitter again. But I love Andy Brown's work. He's here with us today. And we're going to talk about stuff. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> How are you, sir? I'm all right. I'm all right. It is uh, 6 o'clock here. Bit of a dreary December day here in the UK. Oh no, no November day. Sorry, here in the UK. Um, but I'm all right. It's um, you know we can talk about this for ages if we want to. But you know it's been a strange. <laughs> so, uh, well, we'll make it around. the The thing that really stood out was um, your your baseball tour of stadiums. Yeah. Um, can you talk about that project yeah, a bit? That's what I'm. I'm. That's what I'd normally be doing. You know, I, I lived in South Korea for 10 years, uh, from 2009 to 2019. And, you know, I'm a British fella, of course. Um, we don't play baseball here, really. Um, you know, there is, a, there is a community certainly now, and there are teams now, but there's certainly not the level of baseball culture and fandom, and, you know, all the rest of it that, that you guys would have. But anyway, in Korea, they, they, they're... they're, they're they're quite into baseball. So when I was in Korea, I got invited along to a game and just thought I'd go along and see what it was like. And, you know, I've always been into sports to a certain extent. And I loved it. I thought it was great. Like the, the atmosphere um, and just the layout of the field, you know, just the, the, the shapes of the field and the dimensions of the field and the, the crowd cheering and the whole atmosphere. And just started kind of watching baseball relatively casually. Nothing, nothing you know, nothing too, too much. And then... You know, I was, I, was, I was in career teaching up, teaching um, in um, high schools and middle school, uh, international schools. And over the years, I just started watching more baseball. It was kind of like, it was such a part of the culture that I started going along to more games. And then when I, when I, I again, maybe like yourself, but whenever I'm out and about or whatever, I usually have a sketchbook with me. So I'd be drawing small drawings of wherever I am. And then I'd start, be, I'd be drawing the baseball stadiums. And then after a while, I think the, 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 I've always been into crowds and, and communities or like a collective sense, a collective ideal, a collective notion of who we are, our identity, um, who we cheer for, who we boo, uh, what makes me different to you, you know, all these kind of things that we have in life. And of course, they, they, they're on sporting levels, which are uh, not so serious, but sometimes quite serious. And in, and in much higher, higher, higher levels, uh, there, there's these serious kind of differences and, and things we cheer for and whatever else. Um, but there is also that collective humanity. Um, but so I started painting these, these the baseball stadiums. I'd be in there and doing these sketches. And then I started going to see other teams and learning more about baseball in Korea. 
And um, and then, of course, every time you go to a baseball stadium, the one thing you notice is, is, is they're all different. Um, you know, a football stadium or soccer here in the UK, every field is roughly the same sort of size, uh, same sort of shape. Um, but with baseball, the great thing is, is that they're all different. And, you know, you have some that are right in the heart of the city, some that are outside of the city, um, some that are very modern, some that are very old. Um, so then I noticed, of course, my drawings would change according to that. Um, the colours would change according to the fans and the uniforms and the weather and all that sort of thing. So then I wanted to start started capturing that and I started to, I guess I started to take it more seriously where I thought, actually, this is, this is what I really want to focus on. Um, and then, of course, I heard, oh, they play baseball in Japan. So, you know, I wasn't so far from Japan, so I go to Japan, see a few games over there. And, you know, baseball in Japan is very different to Korea, very different to Taiwan, very different to the States, very different to Mexico. And again, it was just even more interesting. I was like, wow, you can really get a sense of how these, these uh, the people uh, celebrate, how they cheer, how they come together, how they congratulate how they commiserate how they do everything together and you can really see that in especially in sports because in sports we tend to let ourselves go a bit and you know in those 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 countries are quite conservative in their um in the way that people express themselves at times so in the sports you can actually get a little bit under a little bit more of a closer idea of of you know what's going on and and, and what people really value so i i started painting baseball stadiums so i went around um all the stadiums in, in Korea, Japan, Taiwan, one in China. And then since I've been over to the States, painted all 30 MLB ballparks there, painted minor league, independent league. Um, went down to Mexico last year where I finished in the States, went down to Mexico, Cuba. Um, and I've actually, t- I've actually done a couple of paintings in here in the UK. I, I, I did the MLB London games in 2019, the, the first MLB London Red Sox and Yankees games I did those and then um and then I started painting I, I, maybe about six weeks ago I was down at a, a, one of the UK based teams I was down at their ballpark painting their their place so um so yeah so I get around painting baseball stadiums and when there's not a, a worldwide pandemic <laughs> well it, it's uh it's always cool to get the background on this type of thing because you know I saw the that you had painted all these stadiums, but getting the why is so interesting, that idea of celebration. Mm-hmm. And I think we all come at it from different perspectives, and that's what makes the artwork. And that show we were in together, um, yeah. they're, they're doing again. I don't know. Yeah. Are you participating? Yeah. Yeah, so that one. starts. That'll start pretty soon. But, um, but yeah, you know, ev- everyone comes at it from a different angle. To me, it was... Um, just a desire for history. I grew up in a family where um, we don't have many pictures of our ancestors. Um, the ones we do are really faded out. They look, especially the when we were on the subject of the Negro Leagues, those, those pictures aren't the highest quality no. when you compare them to what we have in the MLB. Absolutely. But that's what makes them so mysterious and cool and those histories even richer to um to read about and kind of do archaeology on um i i love i love what you're describing with your project because it is um as time passes that morphs you know stadiums even from when i was a kid have changed you know yeah Uh, yeah like i always uh wrigley field's always my um, where I come at it from experience. So I was born in Chicago, and uh, um, and it's one of the stadiums that's left where uh, you know the mechanic down the street's doing a commercial during the the innings, <laughs> as opposed to what it is now in the jumbotrons and um, yeah, you know our, our sporting culture says a lot about us. I think you know the way that sports promoted the way the players react the way the fans react uh the food of course that's served the music that's played everything it's got such a rich um cultural tapestry there which which has got everything in it and it's got all our anger and all our happiness and all our every every bit of a human emotion is there and um and it's yes yeah, it's just fascinating I, I find that it just it never stops there's always more there's always something else revealed 
and um and you know it's, it's like i've got a canvas here that i was doing in cuba and it's got the ballpark of course and it's got the background but then i've got in the I'll, I'll quickly grab it it's got this this guy in the the bottom right hand corner here let me try and show you this hang on and he was the guy who was selling the uh tropicola i don't know if you've been to, have you been to cuba no i'm I would love to, but yeah. Amazing, amazing been... place, amazing people, amazing culture. But the, let me show you here if I can, if it shows up. So you've got the ballpark here, of course, you've got the background there. This is the Torrals in uh, Camelway. And of course you've got the flag. But what I found really interesting with Cuba is you've got these bits, I don't know where this is showing up, but you've got these bits around here, which are pictures of Fidel and the revolution. And also of like baseball players, but it will say underneath it, Patrismo uh, Patris, and Comunidad and all the kind of values of, of their society and, 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 and of their, their, their politics. And then here in the crowd, you've got this guy here. He was the guy who was selling the Tropicola. So that's like Coca-Cola, but they don't have that Coca-Cola. Um, they have Tropicola. So he was the guy selling that in, in the crowd and he came along and I was painting and then he sits down for a bit. We have a chat and I thought, okay, right, so I'm painting him. So I paint him into the canvas. So it's got all these little characters and these little stories of, um, of you know, the people I met that day and, and the weather and the, the, the surroundings and, and all this sort of thing. I don't know how well he kind of shows up. You can kind of see him there. And he kind nice. of whistles up there. He'd blow, yeah, there to, he blow to get attention. Um, so it's... it's um, yeah, I love it. You know, it's 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 uh, it's frustrating at the moment, of course, with the pandemic that I haven't been able to carry on. Um, you How know, long have you been working on this project? Painting ballparks, maybe. God, I don't know now. It's it's kind of hard to say because you know, it's, it, I don't know what you think. I, I I would have thought you'd have the same sort of thing. It's never like I start anything new. It's always just like you're doing the next thing. It's like okay, well. You know, you, you you know, I'm doing Babe Ruth here, but but that was you know, ten years ago. I might have been painting a portrait of my granddad or something. And it's just like you you know, it's it's just that evolution. It's just part of your your own practice, your own mind, um, just coming through. Yeah. And now, now, I guess that was another curiosity. I mean, because all I've seen is strictly baseball. Mm -hmm. Is that just like what you're into right now, or does that? more because i have tons of different projects but mm -hmm. and i've learned to compartmentalize them and even market them but yeah um, I, I i you know i paint everything i would say but of course kind of like you know i think in the past i've probably been guilty if, if that's the right word probably isn't it isn't the right word but but in the past i do everything many 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 different things and i think part of the problem was that nobody really knew exactly what I did. And although I didn't necessarily want that, there's always that thing, I don't necessarily want to be pigeonholed into, right, you're the guy that does this. Because I feel like actually, again, as an artist, I feel like, right, okay, in here, I'll be painting baseball, I'll be doing usually things more to do with that. Uh, you can't see it right now, but behind one of the canvases here is a portrait of my dad that I did, I don't know, six weeks ago when he was in the garden. Um, but those sorts of things I tend not to put so much online because it's not related to the niche, I guess, that people know me for as much. I do put yeah. some because because I also want to be I want to be me. Like I feel like that's that's um, so important in your in your artwork and your practice is that you're authentic, that you're genuine, that it really is what I'm passionate about. I know that if I'm if I don't care about it, I won't paint it. Like, I'm just not interested in it. You know, something inspires you because you've got that, you've got that burn for it. But, you know, you don't, you can't get that about everything. Um, well, it's, that, that's interesting to me. I was, I was very curious about that. And I'm, even a lot of the other artists, I'm curious to hear it. Because even, you've probably seen most, well, on Twitter, you see it, how random I can be. <laughs> Is that, yeah, I think okay. that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a whole lot. But, yeah. but as far as like uh, on Instagram is where I've really learned to uh, just separate them because yeah. I don't want to, uh, like you said, it, it runs counter to the artist's mind to just say yeah. you're only doing this. Yeah. In fact, that's the best way to get us not to do that. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, I'm never, I'm, 
I, I always struggle, but but this is, you know, there's, there's just two such different sides to this where I feel like, I wouldn't say I'm a baseball artist. I, I, I'm, a, I'm an artist. You know, I paint yeah. land. I paint my family. I paint the flowers outside. I paint, you know, whatever. And I paint baseball. I'm mostly nowadays renowned for painting baseball. But some people would say, well, that probably makes you a baseball artist. But I, I, I don't think it's as simple as that. You know, I feel like that's, but I also think that's part of the consumerism world or the, you know, the world we live in is, is that people want to know, okay, if I want a baseball piece of artwork, then, you know, I go to this guy. If I want flowers, I go to this guy. Um, yeah. And I think there is also something in the depth of it as well. I feel like the the um, when you are more, when you're focusing on one project more or one part of your work more, which is what I do with baseball, then I think I do, I do think that develops a richness to it. And I think it develops that you know those ideas come through more. But you see, for me again, I mean, I've got you know here is Cuba again, and I would say my my interest is the ballparks and the baseball and and, and the culture with which with within which it's played so it's you know it is the it is the ballpark it is the game it is the atmosphere but it's also what's going on outside you know the policeman uh the street the market vendor the church the piazza you know wherever it is like or the plaza sorry what is the where is this game played what makes it different in cuba to in korea to in japan to in the states and so on and so forth so you know for for example here's like that's that's one of a, a train ride that i was on from i was trying to get to the game so it was like it was supposed to be an eight hour train ride but it ended up taking 16 hours because it broke down and when it broke down we didn't all get off the bus off off the train but the lady said to me oh, if you want to get off kind of you can get off here for a bit so everyone's just come off the train it's four or five o'clock in the morning and i was just like jesus awesome. mental yeah. like, never and i never got to the guy i didn't get to the <laughs> hours um That's you know and then again, this guy here this is a guy called jimmy that i met in the local square and you know he came up and was talking to me and whatever else so i did a quick painting of him there and it's to me it's the whole you know it's everything i want to capture the country i want to capture the culture i want to try and learn a little bit about how people are doing things there and and why and and, and what does that mean to me and, and and what what does that um what does that tell me about life i guess very cool. Um, it, it's it's kind of become a uh, a passport to you to other yeah. cultures and yeah. That's, yes, I, I think yeah. I think it's. Uh, I think I think painting is that. I I think when you when you're an artist, you're observing so much, you're looking at things so much that you're not always actually participating in them. So it's almost more like you are you're you're moving around the world watching the world in whatever place you're in and whatever culture you're in rather than um being part of it if that makes sense you know you, you're kind of coming you're, you're looking mm -hmm. this way you're not actually in it unless you do i guess maybe you're doing a self-portrait but <laughs> <laughs> no that's it is um almost like somebody else is doing it i feel sometimes you know right i don't know makes sense at all but <laughs> or if i should go get help but um you know all the i can't even start to comprehend the things i make sometimes like where that came from because when that started it was blank that always freaks me out that we start with nothing and something evolves so how um, do you start so do you think right i want to paint a picture of um uh montgomery brewster i saw your painting of him the other day I love that. <laughs> where does that well, come from when, when it's pop art, um, it you know we we have our references. I'll, I'll go I'll go from the reference, but then I'll quickly discard it, and then it becomes me breathing life into that. Yeah, Montgomery Brewster is just that's a movie I remember growing up, and part of doing that is like I'm pushing buttons in the world and seeing who else remembers. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was why I loved it, I think, because I saw it and I just started laughing. I was like, Monty Brewster. I was like, wow, I yeah. forgot. Because <laughs> did he end up playing for the Cubs or was it that his team, or did he own the Cubs or something? I can't remember how it worked out in the film. I thought I've got to watch it back. Yeah, I don't remember the plot yeah. either, but I did I did this, I, this portrait of Jim Rice, actually, and I thought it looked like Monty Brewster from the from Brewster's Million. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, and a, a lot of, um, you know, outside, I guess even in it, humor is so important to me. If I could make nothing but funny pieces all day, I would do that because um, I admire oh, yeah. comedians for that reason that they can get up there and do that for however long they do it because um, I don't, I can't do it in painting. I wish I could. Um, Cause that, that would be a tremendous, hilarious body of work. But the times I that you, you know I, I think you do do it though. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> you make me laugh. Like, I look at your stuff and, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way or a bad way. I'm not meaning like that, but I look at your no. stuff and I, love it because i'm like this is it just makes me laugh i feel like this is there's a real joy to it well i have to say like the 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 idea of how i make things because you know if i sit there and focus i draw really well Mm -hmm. but uh i always especially when i'm doing pop art i started with these album covers um and i would uh take music and and redo the album cover and I always my my narrative in my head was that I was a graphic designer I got this assignment I turned it in and they shoved it back to me and they said what were you drunk when you did this did you paint this and you know it's like of course not you know (laughs) it was up all night and uh, and so that's the attitude I have when I make any piece really is just um kind of this drunken master thing <laughs> even though you know i'm not i'm not a raging drunk or anything it's just kind of humorous that approach to me that um, yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> i think <laughs> I, I i like that it it has its effect on other creators because i'll yeah. see them start to take more looseness in their own work and and the other part of that is like i like people to look at what I do and say I could do that because absolutely you can so do it if you if that's you what you want to do you know what I, I, I was explaining to my mom earlier about I feel like there's a huge amount of bravery in what you do <laughs> put yourself out like that in that way I feel like that actually takes a lot of guts and and I feel like because it's so different that's why that's why when I was looking at the you know I think your stuff popped up I don't know where exactly now, Instagram or whatever. I was like, wow, this is great. Because it was different and it kind of hit me. I was like, wow, this is great. I became aware of you on Twitter, which I was going to ask you because I, I was, uh, uh, you know, the, the pandemic word is coming up again. But when that started, I really started to look at my social media. And I realized that this girlfriend of mine had made a Twitter account for me years ago. <laughs> and I was like, wow, I'm on Twitter. Um but I had not done anything with the account. So I was like, well, we'll take the content you're making and put it through there. And um, I, I think part of it's when I tried to use it, it just, I didn't get it. And then, um, and that's where you started popping. I'm like, wow, there's other artists on here. And then I saw, I draw baseball cards. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, love his work, the Gypsy Oak guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of great artists that were getting buried on the other platforms, but all of a sudden we yeah. we we see each other, yeah. um, which is cool. And, that, and um, it's just interesting all the different ways we're able to market now. And and I don't know if you were talking about like bravery as far as like because I'll, I'll make these. We were talking about the videos before we came on that I make, yeah. and um, and I'll, I'll I'll take the bravery thing because yeah, that um, that you are exposed. I think in general, when you make work, but then adding a layer on that and putting your face <laughs> there, <laughs> and now people are really looking at you. Yeah. Um, but to me, that's never um, done anything but brought positive things my way. Um, yeah. That um, once in a while, there's a bully out there, but um, the the balance of that. Um, it's just so great that um, I, I just, I keep doing it. And it's weird because I don't, um, I always say I record and then I don't ever watch that stuff again, unless I need it to repurpose for marketing purposes, but I don't, um, no. it's very awkward. It's an awkward experience. <laughs> like I, I, even, even doing, I, doing this format, it's like, 
I'm, you know, I get nervous and, um, yeah. but I try to do a video in my hut here and I, you know, you have, I have it on the selfie thing and I'm thinking, okay, right. Just introduce this painting. Just say something good about this painting. <laughs> and of course, then you can't say your name. You can't say where you're from. You can't speak properly or everything just goes out of your head. And before I know it, you're cursing, you've done it 10 times, you're sweating, you're angry, you just feel like, oh, this is just horrible. And, and, and of course, all you want to do is paint. And it's, um, but you know, it's, well, it's, it's and, and that's a good point. Most of us just want to create. Yeah. And early on, I, I, I would, uh, in my career, I, you know, would look for advice here and there. And one of them was this one guy and he said, look, either you find somebody to represent what you do. Um, and if you, if you don't manage to do that, you have to do it. Yeah. It's like, those are the two options. Yeah. And, um, I always dreamed that I would find the right lady to, uh, compliment me and, uh, serve as my rep, but, um, being a horrible person at relationships that never panned out. So I said, um, well, let's, uh, let's get on camera. <laughs> you, there's, there's two things to that. I feel like number one, like you, the, the good thing with, with social media, with Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever else is that you can represent yourself and your artwork in the way it want, you want to represent it. Like you can use the font that you want. You can use the background you want. You can say the things that you want. And it's really nice in that respect and that you can be completely, you can kind of keep it completely in your way of how you'd like to brand yourself. But like we talked about before, the problem with that is that I, I think actually I could probably sell your work better than I can sell my work because yeah. I find that when I'm not talking about my stuff, it's so much easier to say, wow, you've got to see this guy's work. It's so cool. It's so funny. It talks about this. It's all digging into memories of his past and blah, 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 blah. I can do that because I can get really passionate about things that I love. And there's something there actually is that I, 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 it's, it's, there's, there's a strange relationship when it's your own work, how much you like it, how much you love it, how much you despise it and all this sort of thing. I think it was Pablo Neruda. You know that author? Um, Who's sorry? Pablo Neruda. Oh no, I don't know. South, oh, South American. And I don't remember all of the words, but it was pretty much this piece and he's talking about himself, and at, at the end, he's like, man, I would really love to meet that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and that, the other day, I got asked for a bio, and um, there's nothing more um, frightening about yeah. that. Uh, you know, that's just, I, I'm like, okay, because it, it's just weird. It's awkward. It's awkward for me to, what I've learned with, um, you know, from the marketing perspective is, um, well, you have to think around that. And I've learned to just talk. And sometimes, you know, it works better than others. But as long as you keep talking. <laughs> yeah. um, Being yourself, isn't it? But I also think, you know, you know, my dad told me something the other day, which I thought was very good. He, just, he said, well, what you're saying is facts. You know, I was like, I was like sometimes I feel like, you know, I, I never want to be the guy that shows off. I never want to be the guy, oh, look at me, I've done this and I've done that and I, ain't I great? Well, but, but, then, but then part of it is you kind of have to do that. I feel like at times actually you do have to say, look, you know, my work is valuable. My work is worth being part of because I have done these things. I have achieved these things. Not other people have done these enough. So I think there's a value in that. But there's, but at the end of the day, if you're not lying about it, if, it's, if you actually have done it, then I feel like actually if it's truth you're saying and it's, and it's put across in the right way, then I feel like, well, then you're being, you're just saying what you've done. You, and I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. But it can, it's a very hard thing to, to do without a doubt, I find. I think what I've found is that, you, you know, it's the Ernest Hemingway principle. Um, I have degrees in literature, by the way, if you're wondering. <laughs> why I keep going to literature, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, so I, I got to make use of that education somehow because I took, uh -huh. I took all that education and became an artist, a visual artist. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. but, but, you know, it's that whole, you show, you don't tell. 
I don't come in here and I say, well, I'm great because yeah, I yeah. simply show you and I'm not telling you that I'm great. I'm very proud of what I do, but you know, it's your judgment. I am at the end of the day asking you to perhaps purchase or follow or share me or like, or, you know, whatever, whatever new thing comes along. I'm asking you to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Duet me. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, <laughs> so, well, talking about that, how do you, um, how do you exhibit? Cause you have um, a, a big body of work from what I yeah. can tell. Like, yeah, I've got a huge um, body of work. Exhibiting. I find that kind of hard in the fact that it's, it's hard to get those opportunities, isn't it? It's hard to find the right people, I find. Especially, you know, baseball, a baseball exhibition in the UK is not going to go that well. You know, it's not that interesting to most people. Um, now, this year, like, up until the COVID thing, I, I was going to have an exhibition at the, the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame. Like They've got one in Cincinnati. They've got their own museum. When I was passing through there in the summer, I met the director and I was talking to him, showed him some of my work. We kept in touch. And it must have been about February time we were speaking and he said, you know what, we're going to, can we have a, you know, two months or whatever exhibition of your, your ballparks from, from the MLB and, you know, the story of your trip. And I was, I was like, this is fantastic. Like, this is just what I want. This would be, um, I, for me, I'd love to go to that exhibition. I feel like that'd be a really cool exhibition. Really interesting to see these things. Um, but of course, because of COVID, well, that's, that's not going to happen. Um, so really, I mean, the, 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 at the moment, I haven't, I haven't exhibited in a long time. I've just got the possibility that the piece I did for the Negro Leagues uh, might be going over to the States to be exhibited. Um, but, you know, I find one of these things where there's kind of an opportunity to do that. But now I've got to look at, OK, how am I going to get the piece over there? Who's going to pay for that? Framing it. All this sort of stuff. And it's... That's that, that's that next level where you're like, you're just on to that next stage of, okay, you've got this, this stuff that you need to figure out and work out. Um, yeah, how it's going to work. And, it, and, it's, and it's tough because, of course, we need the galleries, we need the museums, we need those people, but also they need, need us. They need work to put on their walls. They need things for people to come and see. Uh, but it, my, whole, my whole career, I've rethought that. Really? Especially, especially now, I am in the deepest thought I've ever been about all that because um, I have uh, I have three kids all five and under um, one of them has uh, respiratory issues okay. so what this whole event meant to me is uh, I don't leave this house mm. now traditionally I would go out, pop up exhibit. We have a gallery here, which we're not running shows at. That I was part of starting that, um, which is yeah, it's a shame when I think about we're not doing shows. It's I, I miss that a lot. Yeah. But you know, how, how long has it been since I've been in that state? And um, we still have a home. <laughs> I have figured out how to market and every day I market part. This podcast is part of that. Mm -hmm. There are many layers to it. I enjoy immensely that I get to talk to you. Whereas normally that conversation might be trickier. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. But we, we get to share ideas, perspectives. Oh, yeah. um, so I guess um, kind of bantering all that. I mean, online. How how do you how do you push your your artwork? Oh, uh, online, Twitter and Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, and then do you do you have a? I have a website. Trying to remember. Well, yeah. I've got a website, underground um, To me, I because I've, I guess so. I started traveling. I left the UK in July two thousand and nineteen, and then I was traveling through. <laughs> US, Mexico, Cuba. And I didn't really know when I was going to end. I, I just thought, right, I'll just go, I'll get painting, um, and I'll see where I end up. I didn't know I was going to end up in Cuba, didn't know I was going to end up in Mexico. I had my route around the US plant, and a few of the teams kind of knew I was coming and that sort of thing. But I didn't really know what was going to happen with it. I just thought, I'll go and kind of see what happens. 
and I kind of felt like, and I still feel like, I feel like, well, if I keep generating the work, if I do the work and I do what I want to do and I do what I'm proud of and I do the, you know, I do it in the way that I want to, the way my, you know, if one day I feel like painting like this in this style or in this, this technique or whatever else, then I'm going to do that. And I feel like the more I've done that, the more opportunities have popped up and the more yeah. I've put myself out there, the more opportunities have popped up. So you, you especially have I, such unique opportunity. I mean, the, you know, the, um, we will come to an end of this pandemic and you will be able to travel again. But when you were doing that, were you, were you video documenting at all? Were you, because just chatting at the camera and uploading that type of thing would be tremendous to what you do. Because I, I happened upon the verbiage where it described your project and I said, how freaking cool is that? You know? Yeah. If you're, right. if you're adding that layer, um, representation will come to you. And, yeah. And, and that, but then that becomes, like I said, I'm in deep thought about that. That becomes about thinking what you actually need and making sure it's the right representation. Yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. I, 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 you know, I did that trip or when I was, when I was, especially when I was in the, in the States, it was such a, it was such a crazy trip in terms of like, I'd be in, um, you know, I'd be in, in Phoenix for two nights. Then I'd be in, then I was in, LA, then I was in San Diego, then I was down in Tijuana for a couple of nights, and it was just like two nights in places, two nights, two nights, or it was just one night, and then on to the next place. In Baltimore, I painted at Camden Yards. That night, I left, got in the car, and started driving towards Pittsburgh. So, because it was such like a bang bang kind of thing, it was there was I did, I recorded video, I did some, but I didn't do as much as I kind of wish or would have liked to into a, in a certain way. Um, you know, I always thought, oh, it'd be really great to have kept a diary, but I didn't because there was just no time. Like, I had to drive seven hours to Pittsburgh or four hours this way or get the hotel, get some more paint, get some more cameras. What's great about that selfie mode yeah. is you rattle at the camera. And I, I think, especially as creatives, we think about, um, we overthink how things look sometimes. But when it comes to marketing, there's a lot to be said about just getting it out there. Yeah. It's not always as graceful, but I, you know, the, the videos that I guess you've seen, um, I've gotten that down to where I'm just doing that on my phone now. Yeah. I used to bring it into premiere and spend too much time on it. And I was yeah. burning myself out, but yeah. now I do those, I do them on the phone. I have a formula. Yeah. No, it works. And, yeah, it works because it fits in with you, I think, and I think that's that's so important because that's that representation. I feel like when I watch those videos, I think ah, this is this. Is, I can really see you, and I can really yeah. see your work, and I, you know, the font, the color, the way you put everything up. I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> and, it, and, and, and it works. It's that it's got that wholesome thing to it, where it's like this is the whole package, and it's watchable and enjoyable. And I think, ah, oh, yeah, this is this is. I mean, I, you know, I like it. Um, I think everyone can do that, though. I. I could see your personality coming through on something like that. Um, well, I, and I, I always say these things because I want to see them. I want to hear from other artists. I, yeah. I dig what other people do because it just, um, it gives me more ideas. It makes me think about things. Um, and, and that's part of this. That's why we got into this was uh, art is dialogue. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but don't you, I, I think what you do well there is that you don't get over tight with it or you don't like you said you, i don't think you overthink it i feel like you're there and you do yourself a thing and you're talking about the painting and what you were thinking about whatever and it's just nice and it just comes out and i feel like there's i think there's something really powerful that's the kind of something that i'd like it to be more of with with how i do things at times because at times i feel like oh like, what am I going to say and how am I going to say it? And how do I put it across in this way? Or, oh, that was a good, and then I'll say something. I think, oh, that was quite good. Maybe I'll, okay, I'll do it again. And I'll say that. That was good. But the natural flow that you have, I think works really well. I was kind of looking at, um, is it Twitch? Do you know Twitch? Is it Twitch, the video streaming thing? I'm studying it because I, um, I think it's great, but I don't, um, as with a lot of 
<laughs> the new stuff comes out, and then I have to figure out how to use them. Part of the videos that I'm making came from looking at TikTok and wondering, yeah. um, well, it's like, I don't want to do dances just yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, uh, but I, I am interested in, in broadcasting to all of these people that at the moment you can reach organically. Yeah. Um, and that, that's what I liked about these dream team pieces because then I could, I could really establish like a relationship between me and the people watching, you know, in, in, in the pandemic, we're all in, we were in lockdown. We couldn't leave the house. And again, it's kind of like what you're talking about. Like, like I've got the football dream team at the top here behind me, but you know, these players represent so much to different people. And, you know, you're talking about Monty Brewster there. That represents your childhood. And, you know, I saw it. And the reason it made me laugh is it represents part of my childhood because I remember watching a thing <laughs> of the film. And, you know, we, we lived through these guys in such a great extent that there's such a power in that. But then I found that, like, on Twitter, you'd get people talking about, well, this guy meant so much to me because when I was eight years old, blah, 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 or I had his baseball card when I was 12, or I traded it away, or I lost this, and blah, blah, blah. And I feel like there's so much power in, in, in these people, these icons that we look at, and how it's, how it's part of our, our nostalgia, it's part of our, our being. Um, well, it's, it's just the idea that um, as a spectator, you oftentimes just, like, I'll pick somebody. That's my dude. And we yeah. talked about this. Did you do the uh, Balls and Bagpipes podcast? No, with, I haven't. Uh, oh, they'll probably open that up again. But those guys are great. And it, um, they did it as part, as the, part of the, um, the Negro League show. Um, ah, they yeah, were just yeah, yeah. promoting. So I, yeah. I got one of those spots. And we were talking about how um, sometimes, you know, a person will be like, well, that was my, my player. Absolutely. And he, he wasn't a very good player, but maybe yeah. maybe you went to the stadium and um, yeah. he acknowledged that you said, hey, he tipped, yeah. tipped their hat at you. Or something that day made him memorable to you. Can um, I ask you a question here? Who's your favorite player? <laughs> um, well, Don Mattingly, okay. the hitman. Oh. Um, just growing up, I, it's who I was watching, and then um, and then I was enthralled uh, by the home run race, Sammy Sosa, being from Chicago. Oh yeah, yeah. That but, would have um, been amazing. I bet. As a kid, that would have been so exciting. Yeah, um, but but yeah, the, I guess those two. <laughs> yeah. But it's very so. My favorite player. I, I don't know about favorite player because I've never seen him play, and you know all this, but. I really like Bill Lee, you know, Bill the Spaceman Lee. He used to play for the Expos, he used to play for the Red Sox. And he's in, he's in the, you know, the Ken Burns baseball documentary. So yeah. when I was learning more about baseball, so I was watching the KBO and, you know, I was going to the games, American friends were kind of telling me a little bit more about the rules. I was seeing little bits on YouTube, understanding a little bit more. So my knowledge of the game was growing. And then I started to get more into the history of the game. I was like, right, okay, there's all these great uniforms and logos and ballparks and they've changed over time. And, you know, there's all these amazing things that have happened. So then, of course, somebody, I don't know who told me about Ken Burns baseball, but I started watching the series. And I don't know if you've seen it, but in that series, Bill, uh, Bill Lee appears just for a very short amount of time. But he sat, and I'm assuming, I think he lives in Vermont, and he sat in somewhere that looks to me like Vermont. There's like hills and nice trees and it's very green. And he's kind of sat in the middle of a field. And he's got this red uh, baseball cap on that's got CCCP, like the, the Soviet state, yeah. <laughs> across the top of his cap. And he's sat there in a very tatty, very tatty, uh, you know, polo neck. And he's talking about his pitches and how he, how he plays baseball. But he's such an outsider. He seemed like such an outsider. I was like, wow, who is this guy? Like, he wasn't the typical athlete. He wasn't the typical, uh, you know, huge kind of meathead or whatever talking. He was he was completely spaced out as as Bill the Space Lee Space Man tends to be, and he was talking about this stuff in such a way that I was like, wow, this is really interesting. There's another layer of, layer of characters and the the outsiders. It's it's always like a baseball team or any sort of team. You've got your you got your outsiders, you've got your cool guys, you've got your nerds, you've got your geeks, you've got your your goths or whatever else, and you've got all these different bundle of characters all together in one place. And I feel like there's always somebody for you. You can always identify with that guy and be like. 
oh, that's me. That's the guy I like. I can relate to him. He's he's kind of like he's interesting. I mean, it's like really powerful about that. You made me think about that more. He's like uh, the Mattingly thing is I um the way I got into baseball a lot was baseball cards, right? And it, just the photography of it, yeah. and then yeah. but then. I started, I would spend so much time with these things, like a freak. <laughs> and um, statistics, Mattingly, I was just always impressed with, you know, the hit man. Yeah. And um, so he just became my dude. I would collect and I would trade the cards. And I, um, I probably still have that somewhere. <laughs> but but uh, to me, it was always kind of a, a visual thing and even if you'll, you'll see certain uniforms pop up in the artwork that I choose and a lot of times it's just about the color and the funkiness yeah. of the way that looks yeah. I, um, I love that but these yeah. dudes were like playing in these weird pajamas <laughs> <laughs> well you gotta get if you ever get a chance, you know, if you can get to, I don't know, Japan or you get to Mexico, you get to Cuba, like the uniforms and they have the logos and how it all changes. I love it. Like you get these traditional kind of colors, but then you have these, these things that just spring out of nowhere. It's brilliant. That's what I was loving about the, uh, the Negro League show was doing the research and man, what is this uniform? And yeah. but like just identifying it and then learning about the, the Mexican leagues and the yeah. Cuban leagues during that time and how that's related. That was really interesting to me. And yeah, absolutely. It, it still is. I'm, I'm excited to do another round of that subject matter. So it's pretty, um, have, have you read up on, on, um, the, on, uh, the Negro leagues baseball? Like that's such, um, that history in particular is, uh, it's just fascinating. Um, yeah, you know, sorry, Sergio, I've lost you a bit on the internet here, but I think I've got you back. But the, you know, there's, there's, there's this kind of going back to my ballpark stuff or going back to why baseball attracted me or, or, or why I feel like sport attracts me is part of that, that it reflects so much of our history. You know, the, the Negro Leagues and the history of the Negro Leagues reflects a lot about U.S. history, of course. But yeah. I find the same in the ballparks. You know, you go to a country and you can see, oh, this country was really financially viable in this this year. You know, in this de decade, they had a lot of money because there's all these stadiums going up. Or you can see, like, the current style in the architecture. Or you can see the, you know, you can see the social history. You can see the economic history. You can see the political history. You know, where are the stadiums mostly based? And there's so much to it, which I find, um, you know, reveals a lot about, our, our experience you look at it um at such a sociological level what what's your background did you were you sociology major or, or it's just a natural no I, I did fine, art, fine art painting um was my major okay um you know what i i, I kind of, i kind of put it back you know what i my my dad uh his job he was a vicar so like a priest or whatever right so I, it's not like I grew up in a church, but like I was always, you know, our family, like, well, my dad was a vicar, that was his job. But because that was his job, then you'd often go to church because my mum wanted to go to church. So, okay, we'd be taken to church. I wasn't ever that fussed about going to church, but we were always in a large group of people. You're always with people and you're always being introduced to people and you're always being introduced to, I don't know, whoever it would be, this, this, you know, Mr. Such and Such who lives down the street or, you know, this is the different people from all, all, all around the community but then sometimes I remember like there was like times where there'd be like a maybe a, a visiting preacher from I, I remember there was a curate who came over from Uganda or something and I remember meeting this guy and I was a very small small kid but I remember meeting this guy and he was from Uganda I mean I didn't know you I knew you I think I had a stamp of like a stamp collection at the time and like I kind of knew a little bit about you know the stamps of Uganda I thought oh okay I know it's in Africa don't know anything about it but I remember like meeting people like that and and how it was always really fascinating to me, really interesting that there was all these different people from different walks of life and different experiences. I remember this this guy must have been winter because it started snowing and some of his kids, he had two kids or a couple of kids and none of them had seen snow before. And as a kid, that blew my mind. I was like, wow, this guy's never seen snow before. Imagine that. 
and I feel like there's always these interesting so part of me thinks the that environment that I, I got to experience and having to be quite social in that environment but also probably having to I think if you if, when you're a kid in that environment you weigh up quickly where you want to be how you want to be who you want to talk to and who you don't want to talk to because you know they, they they seem nice or they're good with you or they're not or whatever else or, or you you know they think that you think they tell funny jokes or they like the same football team or whatever else and so you could quickly kind of like so i feel like again you for me anyway i feel like i was looking around and, and observing these 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 interactions and the way the whole thing worked and um i don't know i kind of enjoyed it i guess to a certain extent mm. the religion bit never got through to me as much but the 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 uh the, just the environment and just the social aspects, there was certainly, there's certainly something in that for me. No, it's just cool because the way you um, have described your project so far and your approach just remind me of uh, my friend. She's, she has a master's in sociology. And it's a lot of what, um, the way she'll approach and think about things. But it's very, very cool. I dig it. So. Thank you very much. I think it, I, uh, it is. It's, it, it's, it, for me, it's interesting in the fact that it tells, I don't know, it's, it's, it's our experience. And I feel like that's what art's great at describing. You know, you talked about Ernest Hemingway and, you know, great books and great music and great art. You know, they, they talk about our experiences of life. And most of them are quite similar. You know, you go to Cuba and you watch a baseball game. It's not radically different to watching one in the States. But in some ways, it is very radically different. Um, the yeah. emotions aren't very radically different, but just the way it's amplified may be radically different. And it's just these little things where, you know, we're all kind of quite similar, really. But we're just, you know, of course, in different <laughs> places, behaving and acting in different ways. Yeah, for me, uh, wrestling's another one. And, yeah. uh, and you see that in the way... Uh, it is in different countries. Even um, I got to see some Japanese wrestlers. Um, it was in Humboldt, Texas, of all places. <laughs> Just out <laughs> in, a, in a, a, a weird part of uh, outer Houston, and um, just the, just the way they their style. It was different, but it's all the same. It's <laughs> and um, and even reading about uh. <laughs> it's it's almost a guilty pleasure this wrestling thing but i love reading biographies of wrestlers because there's it's such an odd life right yeah yeah and, uh, so i was reading um about this one wrestler he's describing the mexican style and this was oh, yeah. this would have been in the 80s but how uh, choreographed it was and how they you know look down at that but now you see the style change here and um it's doing what he was looking down at. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, yeah. But, Have you ever seen any Mexican wrestling? No. Uh, well, on television. Yeah. But yeah, not, that, not live. Wild stuff, yeah. isn't it? Like, they, they, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's wild in general. I, yeah. I guess my interest in that was uh, my parents were so against me watching it when I was little. And again, what do you do <laughs> to a young artist to get him to stop doing something is... Uh, <laughs> they probably should have ignored that interest but it just it amplified it <laughs> so i'm gonna backtrack so uh you, you uh you studied you have a bfa in a a ba we call it ba yeah. okay uh, yeah to... bachelor in arts um fine art painting i studied yeah so we do generally in the uk you do or Certainly when I studied, you, you do your, you finish your high school, then you did a one year foundation course, which is like a one year art course where you do, I can't remember what they called it now, but you had like 12 weeks at the start where you do two weeks doing fashion, two weeks doing sculpture, two weeks doing, you do a carousel of all these different like uh, disciplines. And at the end of that, you specialize in something. So I specialized in fine art. And then, so you do that for one year and then you, then you go to university. So I did my three years and um yeah i mean that was that was that was good and, and now when i look back on it you know back when i finished university i was doing a lot of work a lot of work made out of tea and uh, like the actual drink so so i did paintings using tea i did a picture of the queen out of tea bags um and it was all to do with like heritage and cultural identity and history and and there's kind of like there's there, there, you know I don't really do that anymore, but there's mm. certainly still strands of that which still come through a lot because 
uh, you know, what I, what we talked about before, it's a lot to do with identity and who we are and, and how we see ourselves and think of ourselves and um, what we drink, Tropicola, Coca-Cola or tea. So, yeah, so, <laughs> totally. Uh, so, yeah, so that was, that was, that was my, that was my, my start. Cool. I'm, I'm always, my background's just weird. <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, I got a bachelor in literature, one in philosophy, during that time, I went through photography school, oh, wow. and I got a master's in literature, and um, decided I didn't want to go into the doctorate program because I didn't, I couldn't read um, Chaucer one more time. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, yeah, that that whole time, I I had developed a photography career, and then okay. that morphed into um, I went back into drawing and painting and so it's been it's been a weird ride so i'm always uh why did you go from because because to be honest like i i was doing a lot of photography myself and then i've mm -hmm. ended up i decided to I, I, when i was in korea i was doing a lot of tin type stuff you know tin type photography and some pinhole stuff Love that beautiful yeah oh, it was amazing but i realized that i couldn't do that and paint so i had to make a choice and i was like you know what yeah. i'm gonna paint why did you decide that you were going to paint rather than photograph? What, what kind of drew you? Away? It was strange because I, um, I was always an artist and always exhibited uh -huh. from the time I was 18. I was in art shows, but with photography, you're able to work commercially. So I would get, uh, I would get work and then that turned things digital. And then I became uh, almost depressed because um, I wasn't making things with my hands anymore. I liked playing with alternative processes, especially, but then I, um, I missed, I missed making things. And then yeah. I collaborated with a friend of mine, a friend I made actually through the collaboration. And I remember she handed me some, stuff and said work on this while I go do something and um I wasn't uh you know I had drawn and, and all that but had not worked in any other style really and I started to mess with it and it slow slowly I started to do less photography until I I didn't and um here I am <laughs> that you know this it just became the career um uh, so that that is my. Uh, I still don't. Uh, I still ponder how I, I got to where I am, but <laughs> but I love I love the journey. You know, it's just uh, what a. Yeah. I'm always curious to hear that you started with the foundation of that, and um, because uh, it's interesting how that happened, isn't it? Yeah, and but I think we, we all you're right. We I all get here somehow. <laughs> What's Absolutely. that? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's very much that making thing with your hands. Like there's nothing like being in the dark room, right? But when you're in front of a computer screen and you're going through, I don't know, 200 photos that you took yesterday afternoon, that's not the same, is it? It's well, and I, I love, very different with that. And I, I still use that background in my marketing purposes. Um, I can take yeah. fantastic images, but it's hilarious to me that it's done on a phone now. Even the video thing. The fact that, um, you know, as my schedule is, uh, <laughs> it's also very interesting. Life has gotten all types of interesting, but um, I, I had children later. They came into my life later, like I was 37. And um, so, yeah, I have three toddlers, single father, full-time father. <laughs> um, they go to sleep. I go into the studio, paint. I uh, decide okay, I need a few hours of sleep. I film my little thing and then, um, and then go to sleep. But the fact that um, I can do that as I lay there about to fall asleep on my phone is awesome. But it's exactly yeah. what took me away from photography. I'm like, it's too easy. <laughs> it's become too convenient and um, just a mass thing that, 
isn't optimally what I want to express with. I like expressing this way. Um, it, yeah. um, it is the most fun. It's what makes me the most happiest. So I guess the short answer to that question is uh, I just look for what made me happier. And yeah, and here, yeah, yeah it, it? here we are. <laughs> it's uh, whatever. But, but even that could change. You never know. So. Yeah, that's that's very true as well. I think especially with this this for me anyway with this COVID, you know, with the time we've been in and the the fact that I've kind of had to adapt and I'm in the hut. You know, I used to be travelling all different places. Now I travel from the house, walk down the path into the hut, and that's it. And you know, it's it's really changed my work and it's really changed. Um, you know, I haven't worked on studio pieces, I'd call them like this, in quite a long time. Like, it's usually been very much plain air painting, out and about, like travelling and painting. Um, but recently, I've just started doing paintings of all the football stadiums here. But I'm doing it through Google Earth. So I'm going on Google Earth, and instead of travelling literally, I'm travelling via the internet to, you know, Old Trafford, to, to the Etihad, to all the different stadiums in the UK, and painting using Google Earth which wouldn't be my favorite way to do it or my preferred way to do it, but it still is kind of, it's kind of an interesting process in the way that I'm doing exactly the same thing. I get dropped off at the stadium. I walk around the stadium on street view and I look at the trees and I look at the angles and I look at the light and I'm like, you know, and then I find an angle I like and think, right, that's the one I'm going to paint. But it's, but it's very telling of this time as well. This is, this is the reality at the moment where we can't, I can't be out doing that. That's, that's how it is. And it's, um, but I think there's the value. Part of the value is in in that. It's it's the uh, um, ref again reflecting the reflecting the moment. Well, it, it um the important thing is that we continue to enjoy what we do. You've found a way yeah. to to work yeah, around. That's it, finding. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. It's awesome. Well, uh, so I meant to do this at the beginning of the show, but um. Tell people where they can find your work. They can find it on Twitter at Andy B is an artist. They can find it on Instagram at Andy Brown is an artist. And they can find it on my website, which is andybrownstadiums.com. There's a thing there which I'm not very good at where you should have all three things the same, but I never really planned that out and thought about it enough to get that sorted <laughs> out. But, you know, well, that's how, we, that's how we learn. But um, hey man, thank you, thank you for uh, right. taking the time to talk with me. I want to have you back sometime, so I hope you'll, uh, you'll consider anytime. that. I hope anytime. Enjoy the anytime. conversation. It was great getting to know more thank about you. your artwork. You're more yeah, than anytime. just this faceless person on Twitter now. So <laughs> that's nice to know. Great, right, man. I uh, I'm gonna sign out. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Cheers, Sergio. Beep up.